Hello and welcome to Keep Right on a Birmingham City podcast brought to you from us here at Birmingham Live. I'm Brian Dick and I'm joined not by Alex Dickin today but by Richard Wilford, relatively fresh I hope from our let's call it planning meeting uh, last night. Um, Richard how are you? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, relatively fresh. But, you know, if Willem Willemsen was to be recreated as a stout, then I drank him last night. <laughs> I thought we'd uh, get get some way into the uh, into this podcast before I started waxing lyrical or was invited to wax lyrical about Thor. Um, I'm going to keep that on the download today because I think I'm starting to become a parody of myself. Um, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the questions we uh, that we asked for was... Uh, if we, if me and Thor were to go on to a, on a date, who would pay? Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to address that really, other, other than to say Thor earns probably earns way more than I do. I, I think knowing the Blues fans, that if you and Thor were to go on a date, we'd probably crowdfund it. <laughs> right, it's not happening. Let's let's move on very quickly. So, um, as we are in the world of Birmingham City, we are in the week of shooting fish in a barrel, aren't we, Richard? Uh, an under-21 side came to St Andrews on Tuesday night and was summarily dismissed. And it's off to a non-league team in the FA Cup this weekend. Is that being uh, slightly unkind to the opposition? Or oh, clearly these are matches Blue should be winning? I mean, it's slightly dangerous talk, and we'll, I guess we'll, we'll discuss the weekend in a little bit more depth because you, you never quite know with the FA Cup. Um, Tuesday night, it was just a really professional performance, and if they're going to do that against an academy side, they're going to make it really, really hard for them. It's not very often you see under-21 teams get a proper gubbing in that competition, partly because the sides from the league might not be at full strength, might mix and match a little bit. He went strong, didn't he? I know that was seven changes, but that is a very strong starting eleven that would compete in any game that they play in League One this season. So you can see what Chris Davis's intent was. And for those people who turned up, it's a great reward, isn't it? If you're going to turn up to watch that game on a Tuesday night, probably one of the least attractive games on paper that Blues have played in many a year, your reward was to see seven goals and, and some big moments from some individual players as well. Yeah, far be it from us to criticise the attendances because they've been stupendously good this season so far. There were only sort of six, nearly 7,000, I think, in the ground. But to see them score seven goals at St Andrews for the first time in getting on for 30 years, I think, yeah, nearly 30 years, uh, was an adequate, uh, more than an adequate reward. Uh, and any, any sort of jeopardy about them going through. And, uh, and I think there was a period in... 40 minutes, maybe even this, to, the, to the extent of the start of the second half, where Fulham were in this game, weren't they? They were. I mean, Blues needed that goal before half time. I mean, if they'd gone yeah. in at one all, I'm not sure Chris Davis's message would have been um, delivered gently. I think he would have been very firm because, you know, Blues' issue in recent weeks has been creating a lot of chances and not taking them, getting the good positions in the final third, not producing the, the, the correct final ball. They've got to be more clinical. And even that game, Seven goals in 35 shots. That's not a brilliant strike rate, is it? It's good enough. You know, it's, it's a comfortable victory, but that is an area that just needs a little bit of improvement. So if the confidence of Alfie May, if the confidence of Lyndon Dykes has grown because they got goals on Tuesday night, then that's another really useful knock-on from, from that game. Yeah, indeed. Which uh, which performances stood out for you? Obviously, Thor came off with his, with his three assists you know, one of which was an absolute masterful one for the Alfie May goal. I think I said to you in the just at the end of the game that actually his best moment for me wasn't actually an assist. It was a really cute reverse pass uh, to Jay Stansfield in the in into the penalty area, sort of midway through the first half, which had the whole stadium going the wrong way. Uh, so yeah, Thor for me obviously always is. Uh, which performances stuck out for you? Uh, look, you're looking at players who are, are trying to make an impact to some extent, aren't you? So, you know, you're looking at Alphonse Sampstead, he did OK, but nothing that would put any pressure on Ethan Laird or Taylor Garden hickman in terms of the right-back role. But pleased for him that he got an assist for the final goal as well, and he switched over to the left-hand side, and he did that adequately. Largely wanted to get onto his right foot, but plays the ball in with his left for the goal. And Ayumu, look, we all want Ayumu to succeed. He's a project. He's 21 years of age. What we saw... There's a couple of things. One is when he does express his talent, he has got the ability to score goals, to create chances, and he took his two goals brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Yeah. We also saw him cover in behind when Alex Cochran went forward really well, a lot better. And that is what Chris Davis is going to be looking at, is has he got the 
the, the sensibility now to understand the defensive role of what he needs to do as well. Seemed to be a very popular goal scorer with his teammates, by the way. That that went down very well, that first goal. You could see Lyndon Dyke's celebration. He was warming up on the touchline at the time. I think it meant an awful lot to the group. So Yokoyama, I think, demonstrated that he can earn himself more minutes as the season goes on. And, and with one or two little knocks and problems in the wide positions at the moment, uh, those chances may well come in this little run now where there are, I think, some more straightforward league games coming up, let alone the, the fact they've had the trophy game and and an FA Cup game at the weekend. Yeah. Would you be comfortable if you saw him in the starting eleven for the next league game? Yeah, he's home to Northampton. And, and that's a match that Blues will expect to have a lot of the ball. And if they're going to dominate the ball, you can afford to have players who are not necessarily as good at the off-the-ball stuff, but are very effective with the on-the-ball stuff. And you want him to take players on. You, you want him to do what he did on Tuesday, which was to run the poor kid at right back ragged Gofford, who's who's only 17. He's just signed pro terms. He might be reconsidering it after that. But, but no, I mean these are these are talented young kids, but he wasn't equipped to deal with a guy going at him for 70 minutes. And that's what you need to see more of from him. At Mansfield last weekend, he got the beating of Lucas Aikens, did him a couple of times, and then stopped doing it. And Blues might have gone on to win the game if he just had that little bit more desire and determination to make the most of those opportunities. Yeah, I think I've said before, we probably do be, need to be slightly mindful of just how difficult it must be to to be playing fo football in the country. You know, you barely barely understand the instructions you're being given now. Yes, Blues have hired a yeah. translator. Um, but, you know, in the in the white heat of battle, it's it's going to be very difficult for, for Yukiyama to, you know, to remember what he's doing, you know, receive live communication and instructions from the touchline or, or his teammates. Um, what I like about him is is he's a, a winger who's, yes, he probably does want to come inside on his right foot, but he's not afraid to go outside on his left. Uh, you know, and I, th I think that that creates space when he goes outside. It c c keeps his full back honest. Uh, and... And we've seen, you know, all wingers, we've always said this, wingers are, are judged by assists and goals, aren't we? Uh, aren't they? And um, two really, really good goals. And both really technically good because they were very, very, very clean strikes, weren't they? Yeah, I, I, look, in terms of the technique, both excellent. And you love it when you see a defender leaving his underwear on the floor like he did for that first one. Because that, yeah. that poor lad slid to make a challenge on somebody who's nowhere near him anymore. It, it was just a beautiful moment. Uh, and then just lashing it into the net from there. So you know, clearly a big positive for him. And I think we have to mention it has to be a positive for Lyndon Dykes to get the goal. Um, he, he seemed to get an unfair amount of criticism for the game at Mansfield, not least because he played a key part in setting up the goal with that little reverse ball for, for Jay Stansfield that was perfectly weighted. But he, he just needed that a little bit. And having had the chance to have a quick chat with him off the record afterwards, just to say it, it clearly did put him in a lot better mood. He's got a bit more of a swing in his step now because he feels yeah. like he belongs. Strikers want to be scoring goals, don't they? Yeah, they do. I, I think after Mansfield, if you don't win a game or Blues don't win a game at the moment, you look at the, the sort of the very fine margins as to why they haven't won that game. And then a, a miss like Dykes at, at Stansfield does tend to stick out like, like a sore thumb. Um, it's going to be difficult f for, uh, for Dykes, I think, because... His minutes, he's, he's going to find it difficult to get into a rhythm, isn't he? You, you know, he's not going to. I don't think he's going to start fifteen games up front and and maybe get in get into that sort of on the run that maybe old blue slice strikers like Clayton Donaldson or Dukey kind of kind of need. They need that they need to sequence matches so they can get sharp and 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 you know really sort of get into their stride. Dykes isn't going to get that luxury, so he is going to have to be sort of living off crumbs of minutes. Yeah, I don't think... I, I think somewhere between the two is going to be what happens in the end. Of course, he's not going to start 15 games in a row. And in the modern game, probably nor should he. If, if Blues go deep in the trophy into the new year, and if they win a couple of FA Cup games, it could be the best part of 60 games this season. Yeah, yeah. But there's plenty to go around. The schedule, and you know I'm obsessed with this because I keep on moaning about it when we're not talking on a podcast... In that I think the schedule is going to be absolutely crazy in the new year. There's going to be a lot of three day three game weeks. I think it's inevitable. So they're going to need players who can step in and start regularly. In the modern game, I don't think, particularly with the strikers, I don't think they expect to be playing week in, week out. I think that's that's a little bit of an old thing. Every every successful team 
has a group of strikers generally who can play. You look at Liverpool, for instance, they've got four or five people. They play three, three forward players and they'll mix and match. Not everybody's got an Erling Haaland because that's a little bit different when you've got somebody that elite. Blues haven't got anybody that elite. You've got Stansfield is very flexible in where he can play. Alfie May has been a little bit in and out the starting lineup in recent weeks. So I think Lyndon will get his football um, and, and eventually he'll get slightly more minutes on the pitch than, than he's got in the first couple of three months. Do, this isn't on the running order, but I'd be interested in your thoughts anyway. Looked to me a little bit like we were starting to see the green shoots of a partnership between or an understanding between Stansfield and May. Uh, yes, you can say it was Fulham under 21s and, and they in the second half they were wide open. But, you know, I, I was encouraged by the way they linked up. Were, were you? I think we're seeing glimpses. What encourages me even more, though, is the way that this group share the ball. So for me, you, you've got to have egos. You've got to have players who believe that they're really good. But you're seeing players turn down the chance to shoot in order to give the ball to a teammate who's in a better position. Hmm. Now, it could well be that the likes of, of Jay and Willem and Alfie, they could be on goal bonuses. I don't know. They may well have that built into their contract. But you look at Alfie's goal on Tuesday night. Jay could have shot, but he decides to play it to Willem. Willem could have shot. He rolls it to Alfie. He's got a tap in. That's smart football to start off with. In basketball, they talk about making the extra pass to get an even better shot. Blues have been doing that pretty consistently, particularly in games that they've been dominating. And, and that, for me, is really encouraging. It means people are putting their egos to one side to make sure that the team get the best results. And if you're Chris Davis, you are loving that that's going on at the moment. Yeah, indeed. Uh, got plenty of questions, uh, so we'll rattle on with those. Uh, one from Richard Cox. Uh, you know, far be it from us on this podcast to put the cart before the horse. Uh, but uh, as you know, with Alex, it's very much Alex's stance is uh, when Blues get promoted. So Richard's, uh, Richard's question is in the spirit of that. He's asked, uh, if this squad und under this manager was to stay together for the next 18 months, assuming we're in a championship, where do you think they'd sit and what additions would be needed, if any, to follow in Ipswich's footsteps? Yeah, so, it's funny because we, we think of Ipswich a little bit as the blueprint, don't we? Because yeah. the appointment of Chris Davis is very much a Kieran McKenna style appointment. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a search for, search for the golden child, wasn't it? And and so yeah. so far the the signs are very good on on that front without anointing Chris Davis the the new Kieran McKenna. Um, but yeah, listen, we're, we're, I'm not going to sit here and, and not tick the the promotion spot. It would be. Staggering if Blues didn't get promoted this season. I think they will be playing in the Championship next season. I don't. It doesn't feel like there would be to me like there would be a massive need for a big summer overhaul. You know, all of these players have been signed on long contracts with a view to being part of the team that goes certainly goes into the Championship and maybe even higher. Uh, you look at the spine of the side with with Peck and Iwata, you know that that pairing would would grace any championship side. It's Jay Stansfield has done it in the championship. Uh, Willem's finding League One too easy, so you'd, you'd love to see him given a go in the championship. Um, Clara again playing down a level, probably at the very least. Does it, we're not looking at wholesale surgery, are you? You would like no. to see this team picked up and dumped in the championship now to see how they get on. But well, that was the plan, wasn't it? I mean, that's what they've done. The blueprint was to try and build a championship side in League One yeah. so that next year you can just carry on and make one or two tweaks. I think they look to strengthen the wide areas. Mm. Um, so, so I don't think anybody has made a convincing case that they're it. And, you know, Emil Hansen, hopefully, when he comes back from injury, will turn in a little bit more consistency because I think there's a player in there. Um, Scott Wright, his pace makes him a great substitute at whatever level. I don't think he'd have any trouble in that role in the championship but I don't necessarily see him as a starter. So you know, the first thing is you say wide areas. Um, they'd need a little bit more depth at centre-back, given that Ben Davis is only on loan for now. Is, that, is he a yeah. player who'd, who'd continue? I think he's done really well, by the way. Having come to a club where he wasn't guaranteed any starts, but he is now getting that opportunity with the injury to Christian Bielik. So that, that's really positive. It's tweaks here and there. I know people are query the goalkeepers, and it all stops doing well. And, yeah, and Peacock too. Farrell looked a little bit sharper in midweek. And uh, uh, I think the competition between the two is going to be healthy for them as that goes on. But but clearly Ryan has got the number one spot. But it, it, it's little margins, isn't it? Probably probably you might be looking at another striker 
there'll be a question, do they need to upgrade from Alfie in the Championship? But of course, he's desperate to get his chance to play at that level. And if he keeps on scoring goals, then he's going to be part of it. But I, I just think they'll want to add a little bit in, of depth in certain areas. By the way, can I congratulate Richard Cox for the terrific job he's done with the Estonian cricket team this year? They had a very, very good run. So well done, Richard. Yeah, indeed. <clears throat> I wondered if you'd, you'd bring uh, bring the the bat and the ball game up, the pyjama game. No, um, he, he has done a great service to the developing nations in recent years. So a lot of respect to Richard. Uh Sort of an extension to that, a few people talking about transfers, uh, slightly more recent or clo closer to hand with the window opening in January. KRO Dave, a regular correspondent. Uh, thanks, Dave. Will we look to make any January signings? He's saying I would try and bag Sam Tickle from Wigan. We need to start planning ahead. Well, it's, if one thing is sure, planning is being done. I'm not sure personally how much how many more additions or what needs to be done i think implicit in dave's question as well is obviously slight dissatisfaction with the goalkeepers but as you said you know I, ryan Olsop is doing a very 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 passable impression of a higher level goalkeeper for me at the moment so g general thoughts about january rich yeah i, I mean i don't think they'll be buying a goalkeeper so uh, however good sam tickle is I, I don't think that's a route they're going to go down um unless one of the goalkeepers was desperate to leave and i, I think that's unlikely uh, there could be that there are one or two players who are getting less football who don't necessarily think that blues is the place they want to be staying in january and that that might trigger a little bit of interest elsewhere so you'd look for instance at an alphonse Sampstead with his loan he's only started one game and that's on tuesday night He's third in the queue in his position. He's an international defender. That's not going to work terribly well for him. So you wonder whether that's a loan deal that could potentially be terminated. I don't know the rules and regs about that necessarily with an international loan, but you would query that. Um, there'll be one or two other players who've seen very little football. Deion Sanderson has only played trophy games since he came back from his injury. Be interested to see whether he gets a game in the Cup at the weekend. So there's just going to be maybe those players around the margins. And if they were to go, you would need to replace them. So if Dion was gone, you would need another centre-back. Um, with Alphonse, you might look elsewhere. The one thing we know about this incarnation of Blues with these owners is if they see that there's a really interesting deal to be done that is going to be one that's going to be really useful for the Championship next year and they can do it in January, then they would seize that moment. Indeed. And what's also very different from previous years is that uh, anyone considering coming to Blues or gets an approach from Blues, they will look at where they are on the league table which for the first time in eons is at the top, probably, if not, if not, then very, very close go, to the top. Go on, say the words. Go on, say the words. <laughs> go on, say it. I'm, no, I'm not doing it. Um, you, know, you, know, you know, on the X Factor, it was always the journey. You've got to, you've got to say, they'll, they'll, uh, look at, they'll look at the project. They'll look at the uh, where they are, where Blues are on their ladder, and they'll think, oh, yeah, maybe I'm not getting in on the first rung of the ladder, but we could potentially oh, be getting yeah. in on the second rung of the ladder. And absolutely, Blues would be an attractive uh, proposition to anyone that they take that that might take their fancy in uh, in in January. Not least because if they're well on their way to promotion, you know, a prospective signing would think, well, you know, I've only got three months, three or four months here in League One, and you know, I'm yeah. back at a, back at an upwardly mobile Championship club. Because there's a group of players here who've been persuaded to take a full year. At League yeah, One, exactly. because in the future yeah. they're going to be part of something that's already in position. Um, actually, one of the things I meant to say to Richard's question as well, but I mean, look, let's be absolutely honest about this. If this squad was in the championship last season, Blues weren't going down. Fact. Just, yeah, just with, they would not have gone down with this group. With which manager? Well, well I, I'm <laughs> counting the manager as part of the group. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no th this, this squad and this manager. Blues do not go down in the championship. It might have been a little bit harder getting them to this point in terms of the way they're playing and the playing style. It might take have taken them longer to impose that on the championship, and you are going to drop more games because of the quality of the teams that you're up against. Because so I think it's a fairly ordinary League One this year. I think there have been far stronger League Ones in recent seasons than this one. But there's no way this group would have been in a relegation battle. Yeah, can't dispute that. Uh, we touched on this slightly. Ben Mountford has asked, do you guys think that we might be at risk of losing players in January? Uh, now, you've sort of talked about the ones that might be feeling a little bit downcast with the lack of minutes they've got. Ben, I think, is referring to players that are going to get spotted. So, 
Uh, he mentions uh, uh, Willem Willemsen, AC, I'm assuming that means Alex Cochran, uh, Tomoki, um, and, and players like that. Do you think there's any chance that anyone gets poached or lured away? I think it's highly unlikely. Yeah. I mean, if you take the example that Jay Stansfield has come to play at League One level, and clearly a good championship player, potentially a very good championship player, who could certainly compete in the Premier League in the next couple of years. He He's an example to everybody there. Willem Willemsen is loving what he's doing at the moment. 10 goal involvements in 14 appearances. That is a serious statistic, isn't it? So, you know, I, I, know, I know I don't need you to put any more veneer on Willem. Uh, you know, we, 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 we know that you've got a picture of him somewhere in that room. We just can't quite see it at the moment. Listen, um, we, we I need- love the fact... I love the fact that Ben's raised Alex Cochran. I think Cochran has been outstanding. There's no yeah. backup for him at the moment because of Lee Buchanan's lingering injury problems. And he has come to the wicket match after match after match. The poor guy must spend the rest of his week lying down. But but he has been absolutely exceptional. And, and he is the trigger for a lot of what they do. He is the start of so many of the attacking moves. And a key part, Ben Davis was talking to me about that the week before last, that, that it's, it's, so much of it goes through Alex. And when Ethan's fit and well, so much of it goes through Ethan as well. So I think it's, it's really interesting. I can't see any of those players being lured away, particularly not Iwata. I mean, he is loving life yeah. at Birmingham City right now. Um, he's playing his best football. He loves the partnership with Peck. You know, that is, as you said a few minutes ago, absolutely ready to be a championship midfield pairing. Mm. Yeah, I think I agree. I, I think the prospect of anyone being pulled away or lured away is very, very small because they all knew what they were signing up for just a few months yeah. ago. The potential of someone being feeling pushed out because of the lack of minutes, I think that is a big more of a risk. Um, yeah. but they, it would, I have, mean, to they, a, it would well, have to be a Premier League club to sign yeah. any of these players. And I don't think any of them are going to attract a Premier League club just at this point. Just Whereas if they're, yeah. if, if they're performing like they are now in the Championship this time next year... That becomes a very different thing in that they could get courted by Premier League clubs. If if, if Willemsen's goal involvement's at the same level, if Cochrane is playing with that same consistency as a proper old-school left-back who could do every part of the game, by the way, because he can defend, which is what I like about Alex Cochrane. Mm. Um, I, I just think that's the point where suddenly you get people with serious money flirting with these players. Yeah, indeed. And we'd be naive to think that Willem Willemsen has it's grown up in Iceland dreaming about playing for Birmingham City. Of course, they all want to be in the Premier League. And But yeah, I think we're probably, as you say, maybe one window, maybe two windows a little bit too yeah. too, uh, too early for those conversations. A uh, little bit of disquiet about set pieces, Richard. Um, couple, one question and one point. Uh, just to lay the table before I read the question. Blues have only scored, according to whoscored.com, they've only scored two from two set pieces in League One this season. Uh, Lee, Lincoln top that particular table with 10, Bolton and Blackpool have nine. Greg has asked, what's your opinion on attacking set pieces? I believe that we haven't been utilising them well enough, especially with the players we have, in brackets, quality and physical profile. And the club should look at getting a set piece coach, as many other teams do this. Thoughts about set pieces? Who, who's who, who's in control? Is Jonathan Grounds on set pieces at the moment? It, it appears to me that Jonathan Grounds is. I mean, he's relatively freshly installed in that role. Yeah, uh, He's certainly coming to the edge of the dugout when there are set pieces. Um, I, very well, there are two sides to set pieces. You don't want to be conceding from them. Now, conceding from the long throws that they did in two consecutive games, um, that would have been very frustrating against uh, Charlton and then against Lincoln. Um a lot of teams in League One are bigger than Blues. I know that there are some big units in the team, including Villain, but you, you, you look at the recent games. You mentioned both Lincoln and Bolton there as teams who get a lot of goals from set pieces. They're big. Mansfield, big burly team as well that Blues played at weekends. Um, yeah, look, would you like to see more goals from it? I think Clara is capable of six, seven goals this season. The only one he's got so far is in the trophy. I think Ben Davis is capable of getting on the end of things. Um, they just need a little bit of better delivery, and I, I was I'd be I find it hard to recall when they have scored from a free from a free kick or a corner this season so far. Was they've got a couple goal. of goals from penalties, but uh, it was Beelitz goal that was second phase set piece, I think, wasn't it? The one, at the yeah, back I think it was. Sort of came, came off his shoulder. Um, yeah, I can't can't think think of the, the two goals. Um, 
do you have a massive issue with the delivery? Because I look at the Blues technical players and whether it's Cochrane or Leonard or Peck, you know, there's a sufficient good level of technique and technical ability there to be putting good balls in. I, I think it's better than last year. Yeah, I, yes. I, I do. I mean, because I thought set pieces at both ends were really, really poor at times last year. And uh, when we were invited to a training session under a certain manager that will not be named, the um, the section of the training session that was devoted to set pieces was an utter shambles and very, very brief. So if that trick. was, yeah. But if you if you want to use a word like that, but it was it was it wasn't impressive. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're too good at words. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Honestly, um, honestly, villain wouldn't understand that if you said it to him. Just, you stop with this. Uh, KRO, KRO Dave again uh, chips in on the set piece discussion. Not a question, just a statement. We have to improve our attacking set pieces. We don't look as if we could score in a month of Sundays. We also need to be more ruthless in front of goal, which is an interesting point, Tuesday aside. That was something we were discussing in our planning meeting, um, wasn't it? About the, the chance conversion ratio. Blues do need to be more ruthless. I don't. I, I don't think. I don't think there's any debate about that. And, and, and you know, Chris admits that as well. Um, you know, I think we, we've seen Alfie has had a little bit of a, a poor month in terms of his finishing. We've seen quite a few scuffed attempts. We saw the one-on-one -on -one where he goes clean through and doesn't get a shot away. Um, so that's a little bit curious from that point of view. Um, Jay, we've seen shanking one or two shots as well. But they just have to be better at it. I think they've been unlucky at times as well. But, you know, there are opportunities now against some slightly weaker opponents. And that was mm. a useful piece of research. I, I, may, I, I don't know who came up with the piece of research. It was something I was hoping to do myself. I haven't got to. But online this week, on social media, you may have seen uh, a chart demonstrating that Blues have had the toughest schedule of any League One team in terms of the places of the teams they've played so far. So yeah. of the eight, eight teams below them, I've already played seven of them in the first 12 games. They've played nobody in the bottom four. So I, I just think there is going to be this little soft part of the schedule now that they've got to capitalise on and, and try and build this lead at the top of the table. And that means taking chances. But you can't argue that they haven't been as clinical as they should be so far. Not to be too unscientific about it, but it does feel like everyone that Blues have played have, have been either in the top six or within a win of it. Um, and as you say, there, there are some more inviting uh uh, op opponents to come just I, I don't know whether you're a massive subscriber to xg some people do like it i'm largely ambivalent blues is xg so far this season is 19.92 which is eighth best in the division they scored 22 goals uh, which means that they are performing at two two goals above that expectation uh, which is seventh best in the division their goal total of 22 is fourth best in the division. So I suppose let, let's be really, really simplistic about it and say Blues are comfortably have the most pos possession, uh, yet mm -hmm. their goals is only fourth and their XG is only eighth. So I think there probably is something to be uh, to, to, to be addressed there. And yeah, I suppose... It's not just the finishing there, though, Brian, isn't it? There have been games where they've had 70% possession and only had eight attempts at goal. That shouldn't yeah. be happening. That shouldn't yeah. happen. They've got to get the ball into those areas more and maybe be a bit more speculative. In that, you know, they've been helped by the fact that Iwata's happy to strike the ball from outside the area and happens to hit it pretty crisply. If you, if you yeah. think of the contribution, I think three of his four goals have come in league games, I think, or, or of all of them. I can't remember now. I think it might be three out of four. But, but you know, he, he strikes uh, the ball so very well. Yeah, indeed. And let's face it, Chris Davis isn't going to be happy until... They're creating 30 chances and scoring all of them, is he? So, mm. yeah, uh, the rotation is another big, big issue um, that, that uh, pick correspondents have asked us about. And I know this is a particular favourite subject of yours. Uh, the Duke's head has said, with the amount of options we have in midfield, do you think uh, Chris Davis needs to utilise Leonard and Gardner Hickman more in the last 30 minutes of games when it's clear Iwata and Peck are sometimes tiring? Um Lester Pyatt has asked, is there any way we can tweak the formation to get Leonard into midfield? Uh, and Langan198 has asked, are you a bit concerned that whenever we have a three-game week, we always look poor in the third game? Considering we're going to have a fair few this season, if you, as you've said, I think it needs to be looked at a bit more by the manager. So that's a fairly broad canvas to, or for you to go out there. Early observations on rotation, it, it does well, need looking at, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, any, anybody who's heard me in recent weeks on BBC Radio WM and, and any of the interviews I've done with Chris Davis will know that that's currently one of my real bugbears. There yeah. will come a point in the new year where they end up playing six or seven midweeks in a row. It's, it's going to happen before the international break comes, which is way into March. There are going to be January, February, early March is going to be a nightmare. So he has to get his head around the rotation of players. He has a strong enough squad to do it. Um, Mark Leonard, incidentally, did, of course, play 70 minutes slightly higher at the pitch when Emil Hansen got injured the other week. So mm. Leonard can play in other positions. So that, that kind of answers that. But there isn't so much of a drop-off. If, you, if you've got three games in eight days and you say, well, OK, Pecky, Wata, Leonard, we'll start them two each. Now, you could do that. The problem that Chris has with that is that he loves them together, Peck and Iwata. And at the moment, he can't get himself past that. I asked him a question in midweek after the picture over the Fulham Academy that had nothing to do with Peck and Iwata, but he still brought them up as about, you know, we, we moved the ball really well, even though we didn't have Peck and Iwata and clearly we missed them. Mm. So, yes, they are outstanding. But if this game is a all well, this season is a 55, 60 game season, they can't start them all. Iwata in particular struggles with the three and eight. Mm. So you've got to at least look at that and, and say, well, three games, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, whatever it is, maybe we start Iwata twice and we give him half an hour off the bench in the other one. Peck, I think, has got a little bit more in the tank, to be fair. And there are other positions where he, he's going to have to make some changes. He's got the ability to do that at right back with Gardner, Hickman and Laird. And quite often they'll play 60 and 30 and you can switch it around. Cochrane's got had no help at all. So that's something they have to look at as well. But he will have to get his head around it and he will have to work out how to when to rest players. He'll be listening to the sports scientists and eventually I think they'll be getting a little bit louder in his ear. Just make it just gonna make that point actually. Obviously, you know, we we come away with our impressions, but Davis will be getting all sorts of data that we're not privy to. Uh, now we we don't know whether he's mindful of that data, data, you know whether it in, informs all of his thinking, whether it informs none of his thinking. But he will know exactly how fatigued his players are. Uh, and the other the other point I wanted to just dwell on a little bit was the drop the concept of the drop off in quality. I, I like Mark Leonard, and when he was first signed, and when Blues was in, in the early matches, and Leonard was playing more regularly before a water arrived. I thought if Blues go through the divisions, Mark Leonard is a player I can see going with them into the Premier League. I think he's got a very high ceiling. And I've not seen anything to dissuade me of that since, other than the fact that Leonard's minutes have, have been limited. So I don't think there is a I don't think there's a, a massive drop off. I think what it is is a stylistic thing though. You know, then Garden Hickman and Leonard are not like for like for Peck and Iwata, are they? So so the way Chris wants his team to play moving the ball very, very quickly. And he made reference to me last night about how important it was that they move the ball quickly. I think that's probably why he favours Peck and Iwata. Yeah, but it's their ability to play on the half turn. That's what makes them elite players and, and will make them elite players in the division above as well. But it's, you know, it's slightly different if you have either of the other two in midfield, but they are high-quality players. For Leonard, it's been a challenging year. Last season, he played, he started all 46 league games for Northampton. Mm. And he had two years there on loan. So he's used to playing a lot more regularly than these. He's only made three league starts. He's played all of the cup games, by the way, in the in the, in the two competitions they've played in. So, so for him, it's a big adjustment. He will suffer a little bit from not getting regular football. And at times, getting you know, four or five minutes at the end of the game, he's not been brilliant. You give him 20, 25 minutes, he's been a good finisher. You know, this whole notion of starters and finishers rather than starters and substitutes. I think he's been very effective. Seven substitute appearances in the league so far. But... I do think they're going to need to start him more often, and I don't think he'll let the team down. No, and I just wonder if uh, we've made reference to these the slightly easier inverted commas f- fixtures to come up. I wonder if Davis just wanted to have that security of knowing he had his first two in the games against Charlton and Mansfield, and you know the the games against the rivals, I guess, and and maybe he'll feel under less pressure to flog them quite so much. As the as the, the sort of the, the more inviting fixtures come, let's move on. Um, George Revel has asked after the lineup Davis played on Tuesday night, what do you expect to be the starting in eleven against Sutton on Sunday? Uh, which is uh, exactly what we wanted to talk about anyway, George. So thanks for that. Um, I'll do mine, Richard. Um, I think yeah. Peacock Farrell will start um, in goal uh, and. 
I've gone for a back four of Laird. I've gone for Dion. I think Clara's played quite a bit of football. Uh, ben Davis and Alex Cochran. Um, intervene at that point. Thoughts about that? Uh, yeah, I think Ryan Allsop will play. Um, it's a cup match. It's live on the telly. I think that will make an impact. And I think Clara will stay in the side as captain. Um, so I think I think it'll be the f- what one would perceive as the full strength back four. Right. I, I, you know, I mean, Laird only came on as a substitute and actually had a real impact against Fulham under twenty ones. Came on with real energy. So I think I think it'd be Laird, Clara, Davis, and Cochrane. I'm going. I'm going very route one with my selection. To be honest with you. No fair dues. I've gone for Peck and Iwata in in the middle of the park. Sounds like you're minded to go that way too. Yeah, d- d- neither of them were needed in midweek. That's ideal. There's you know six days after the game against Sutton before Northampton. They both start. Yeah. Uh, the attacking three. I've gone Villanson May and Keshi Anderson. Uh, what, what would you what would your thinking be that? Yucky Armour done enough to get another start? I think, that, I think the really interesting decision he's got against a team like Sutton, and they're, they're a very new team. There aren't many players who were there when they were playing in the league last season. Mm. It's, it's a very new group. They're, they're mid-table at the moment in the National League. Um, there, there is an argument that it might be good to start Yucky Armour but equally, that's that would be a tough pill for Keshi Anderson to swallow because he is in his very best form since he arrived at Blues, scoring goals, making great runs off the ball. You know that that run that he you can really I know it was late in a game against a tiring academy side, but that run that Ben Davis spotted of Keshi Anderson's for the for the sixth goal, he's been doing that all season. If they start spotting that run and start putting the ball into those areas, then he's going to be even more productive. So I think it'd be quite hard to tell Keshi he's not playing at the weekend. Yeah, indeed. I I want to see more of Al, Alfie and and Jay and how that evolves. Uh, I've gone for Stansfield up front. Um, think that's the way it will go, or do you think Dykes yeah, might I, might creep in? I th- I think we only really disagree at the back, and the mm. only thing that might change that is if he feels he needs the physicality of Lyndon Dykes against Sutton. That that would be the only thing that he might might go the other way with. So finally, what are we expecting from Sutton United? It's not a ground I've ever been to. Um, so no, you're look, look, looking forward to ticking that one off, yeah. It was, it's not one I've been to either. I mean, I mean, it won't count in my quest for the 92 now, unfortunately, whereas it would have done last <laughs> season. Um, they're going to make it really difficult. They've got a, a cup pedigree. I know that you know, for those of us who are old enough, we'll remember when they beat Coventry in the 1980s. So, you know, that was a spectacular result at the time in the third round. And, and you know, the, the ground will be, I would imagine, heaving. Um, it will be very, very busy. I think the atmosphere will be really good and Blues will have to impose themselves. But in games like that, when you look at, at Shrewsbury and the trophy, when you know they were bouncing back from a real disappointment the previous weekend, and you look at last Tuesday night, in, in games where they are the red-hot favourites, they've generally come out with a very, very professional attitude. And you know, Chris and the coaching staff will, will, will expect nothing less from them than that. Yeah, I think the fact it's on TV will just... Not sharp and Chris Davis's focus because you know the the certainly doesn't ever lack any any degree of focus, but he'll, he'll be mindful of the fact they're on a sort of a national stroke international stage, and maybe people that don't subscribe to other channels, you know, what will be will be getting their first sight of the new Birmingham City. So mm. yeah, I, th- I think that'll be very much foremost in his mind. And I think that the fact that they didn't rearrange the Exeter game. For next midweek when possibly they should have done um and you know that was really that the prospect of that was killed off when the, the sutton game got moved to the sunday mm. but they could have gone sunday wednesday saturday but the fact that exit the game isn't being played next midweek i think that's bad news for sutton because that, that leads to blues fielding this i think the strongest team they can put out yeah they can afford to leave it all out there absolutely uh richard i know you've got an absolutely jam-packed weekend on bbc wm just tell us what's coming up please yeah, well, and we've got six FA Cup games, amongst other things, so I'm going to three of those. So uh, looking forward to going to Tamworth on Friday. They take on Huddersfield. Rushall Olympic, great story, little village club in the first round for the first time up against Accrington. And I'm, I'm just about to head up there to go and see the chairman and the vice chairman. So really looking forward to that. Very hospitable place is Rushall. Indeed. And we're obviously uh, going down to Sutton on Sunday. So, Richard, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you all for listening. Hope you found it enjoyable enjoyable and insightful. All that remains is a keep right on from me and... A keep right on from me. <laughs>